Okay, awesome. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. This is a joint work with Joe Loon, Leftris and Ling. And let's get started. So let's start with secret sharing. So this is an idea that let's say Alice has a secret Bitcoin key, or a secret key for a Bitcoin wallet. She can store the secret key in a single machine. But if this machine gets compromised, then her secret key gets compromised and she may lose all her Bitcoins. So secret sharing is this magic hat where she can pass her secret key through this hat and this hat will give different looking keys and she can store each of these keys in different machines. Now the attacker has to compromise the large fraction of these machines to be able to use the secret key. Even Alice also needs access to this large fraction of machines to be able to use her secret key. So this is called as N plus L comma n comma l plus one threshold secret sharing where n is the total number of machines where we are storing, storing the secret and l plus one is the number of machines that we need access to use to be able to use this red secret but in decentralized setting we don't always have or we sometimes we don't want a party that knows the entire secret so uh, examples are consensus protocol threshold wallets particle services and a distributed key generation problem is exactly solves this problem where you don't have a trusted party that knows the entire secret. What's an intuitive definition of distributed key generation? It's a multi-party computation protocol among a set of nodes where each node outputs Z1 and some common value. Well, party one will output Z1 and some common value. Party two will output Z2 and the same common value, so on and so forth. Where these GIs are shikra shares, the magic hat from the previous slide of the secret Z. And the public key are g to the z and threshold public keys are g to the ratio each of their individual uh, secret shares. So we are focusing on discrete log base uh, threshold to system. So what are applications of threshold uh, this, uh, distributed key generation? There are lots of applications, for example, threshold signatures, threshold encryptions, randomness beacon, and many others. Let's formalize the threshold secret sharing slightly more formally. So it's a mechanism to secret, uh, share a secret Z among n nodes so that L plus one nodes can recover the secret. Any subset of L or less nodes learns nothing about the secret. This is repetition from what I said earlier. So you can pictorially, this is, you can view this as on the left. This is the one classic example of threshold secret sharing from Shamir. So where, you em where we embed the secret as the constant term of a degree L polynomial. So here L is three, L plus one is four. And each party gets one evaluation point on this polynomial. Since this is degree three polynomial, four points are sufficient to recover the polynomial and, and hence recover the secret. And we can also argue about the secrecy of this scheme. Verifiable secret sharing, you can think of this as a protocol notion where one party known as the dealer has a secret and the dealer wants everybody else to end up with the share of the secret. Note that in verifiable secret sharing, a subset of nodes, including a dealer could be malicious. So this will be the outline of my talk. I'll talk about definitions and system model. I'll give existing DKG template and also talk about their limitation, talk about our approach, evaluation results, and few extension and applications, and I'll summarize. So this is the DKG ideal functionality more form formally, which is parameterized by elliptic curve group and a generator. There are parameters T, which is the number of failures and total number of nodes, and L is the degree of the Shamir secret sharing polynomial. Ideal functionality samples a random polynomial z of x of degree l. And the distributed key generation secret is z, the polynomial evaluated at zero. And share of each party is the polynomial evaluated at i. And party one will get z evaluated to one, party two will get evaluated to two, so on and so forth. And this is the high threshold distributed key generation when the reconstruction threshold l, the degree of the polynomial, is larger than the fault tolerance, there's a number of uh, failures in the system. So why high threshold DKG is are useful? It can give us a more efficient consensus. It can give us higher fault tolerance and also uh, for in terms of collision attacks also give, can give us better privacy and threshold encryptions. So what, what's our system model? We focus on asynchronous systems where message delays could be arbitrarily wrong, but messages eventually get delivered. And in terms of setup, we assume public key infrastructure and a common random string. Let's look at existing DKG templates. So if you look at DKG protocol, any DKG protocol out there, you'll probably see a similar template. So each party 
we'll sample a random value and we'll share this value using a verifiable secretion. Every party will do this in parallel. Then they will run a consensus mechanism to agree on which subset of parties did their VSS correctly. Let's say the consensus output outputs one and two, which means party one and party two did their VSS correctly. Then the DKG key secret will be the sum of these two random values. Public keys are correspondingly defined and share of each party will be the sum of the shares of the corresponding secret. So this is the share of party I. I denote them using angle brackets. It will be S1, share of S1 and plus share of S2. But many of you might know that the deterministic consensus is impossible in asynchrony. Typically consensus uh, require shared common coin and common coin, most of the existing common coin in asynchrony requires DKG. And we now see that DKG needs consensus. So there's a circularity. We can break this circularity. We break this efficiently in one of our previous construction. And if you're interested, I will encourage you to look at that. So given this general framework, what's a natural construction of high threshold DKG is to simply use a high threshold verifiable secret sharing where the nodes can share the secret using a larger degree polynomial. When you do this, the rest of the uh, framework remains the same. But high threshold verifiable secret sharings are very expensive in asynchrony. If you, if you follow the previous framework, which we did in our previous paper, we see that we get a performance which are bad. For example, with low threshold, it takes about 10 seconds with 64 nodes, but with the threshold of 2T, it takes 164 seconds, about 16 times or 15 times higher. Similarly, it's, it has much worse, six to seven times higher bandwidth uses. So we, we cannot use this. That's not uh, the most suitable way to do that. What's our approach? So our approach is very simple. It just We just rethink about the problem statement. So what's a DKG? DKG is nothing but a sampling a secret random polynomial. So this is there's a bunch of nodes and we want to sample a random polynomial which is secret such that each party gets only one evaluation point on this polynomial. So this DKG, the problem statement says nothing about using this general framework. If you look at the ideal functionality, that's that's exactly what's what's happening. It's sampling a random polynomial and giving one evaluation point and some common info to every party. It's high threshold whenever the degree is larger than or equal to t. So I, I make it equal for simplicity. So look, we want to sample a, a polynomial that's secret shared. So one way to do that is to sample uh, l plus one random coefficient z zero to z l that was secret shared. How do I sample random coefficients? So I already know how to sample secret random value. Let's just uh, use that framework to sample one coefficient z0. I can run L, of L plus one of them in parallel and generate L plus one random coefficient that will be secret shared. But this is definitely expensive. We can also use some uh, batched idea where we share, uh, each party shares a batch of uh, secrets and we can define the corresponding coefficients using those secrets. But we can do much better we do much better using the randomness extraction by using hyperinvertible matrices. So this is a general trick that you probably want to know and use it elsewhere as well. So randomness extraction is a function that has n inputs, x1 to xn, and some of the inputs are biased, but you don't know which ones are biased. But what you know is that at least m of these inputs are informally random and independent. And what you want, you want to output those, you want to output m uniformly random values, let's say y1 up to ym. So one simple example of randomness extraction that you might have seen is simple summation. If you have a bunch of values, some of which are random, you just add them, you get a uniform random value. But we want to do better. So this is a, this is a technique from a TCC08 that where, where you take the input and represent them as a vector. And what you do, you multiply this vector using a vendor mode matrix. And what you get is y1 up to ym. And they argue that these are uniformly random and independent. This, has, this randomness extraction has very nice properties. One is this function is linear. And it extracts all the entropy. If you have n, m uniformly random values, you output m uniformly random outputs. So we will use this in our Heidelberg DKG construction. So how do we use this? Recall we have to sample L plus one random secret. 
So each part it will run the general framework. And let's say we program the consensus to be to be able to output n minus t of these indices. We let's say without loss of generality, these are first n minus t. We can uh, put them as a vector and we multiply with uh, randomness extraction to be able to get random coefficients. These will be secret shared. So why n minus two t minus one? Because there are n minus t non-zero values and t of them could be from malicious. So we'll only be able to output uh, t plus one uniform random values. But we need L plus one of those. How do we do this? Well, we just secret share two random values and then generate the rest of the coefficients using this idea. There are two things to note that the performance is almost um, same as low threshold DKG. And this L can be arbitrarily large. For any L, you just have to start with, each party has to start with L over T random secrets. So, so far, we have seen that uh, we, we have only constructed that every party gets, we generate the coefficients, but we care about evaluation points. So let's just define this natural polynomial, GX, using these as coefficients. So know that everything is happening over, you know, over secret shared data. So every party will have secret shares of the coefficient and not the entire coefficients. So we can correspondingly define the secret shared polynomial. And what each party will do, they will evaluate the secret shared polynomial at one to all the way up to n. So each party can locally compute this vector of secret shares. Note that this is possible because this polynomial evaluation is a linear function on given this as plain text. So every party now has uh, shares of everybody else's secret, but we don't want this state. What we want, we want party one to get Z1 in the plane, party two to get Z2 in the plane. But the, uh, we can do this. We can do this using one simple round of interaction. Part, party one will send a share of Z1 to party one, share of Z2 to party two, so on and so forth. Everybody will do this. And then party one will receive share of Z1 from many nodes, let's say first T plus one of them without loss of generality. And it can just use Lagrange interpolation to output Z valid at one in the plane. Similarly, party two can do this. Everybody can do this. So this is our protocol. There are two parts, generate the coefficients and then from coefficients to get to the evaluation points in the plane. Let's look at the evaluation results. You can see that this is much better than the previous high threshold DKG, and it's, it has uh, only like 30% overhead because you need to ex share one extra value, and there are some extra communication and some extra cost, yeah, computation cost. Similarly, with the bandwidth are also much, much more better. I want to touch upon, let's say, at least one extension. So let's look at proactive secret sharing. So this is this idea that uh, you want to refresh the key shares while keeping the same secret. So let's say we started the share of S, which are S1 up to this it's left values, but we want to end up with a set of one, set of two, these are new shares of the same secret. How do you do this? You generate those random polynomial, but you generate the random polynomial slightly more carefully where you everybody uses a default zero as the co constant term of this polynomial. Then each party after receiving Z of I can update their own share by summing their share. The correctness is straightforward. If you, the S had evaluated at zero it will be S evaluated at zero, and, which is will, will be the same secret. The idea is to use the same uh, default zero value as the first constant. We can, we can do proactive secret sharing in many other ways. I won't have, time, I think. For example, we can use the original secret, low threshold sharing of the original secret, and then we can define the new secret as Z valid die. We can also do dynamic proactive secret sharing. And yeah, I start a little late, so I end at eight. I'm supposed to end at eight. Okay, uh, let's end here. We, we can do much more, many more applications. I want you to look at the full full talk. It will be probably out on YouTube, uh, in one hour talk to see how, what else we can do with uh, this idea. So in summary, we give a high threshold asynchronous distributed key generation that has asymptotic communication complexity of kappa and cube and takes log n rounds and assumes DDH. 
and also random oracle and PKI it has similar efficiency as low threshold uh, ADKG. And we prove its security in the real and ideal paradigm, but we believe it extends to UC framework and we have distributed polynomial sampling and it has many, many applications. And that's it. Thank you.